welcome to Deep Insights, where we get you a 360-degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I am Sridhar Ramakrishnan. On the show today, why India needs nerves of steel to get its greenfield steel projects going. Is the new Mines and Mineral Development Act a boon or a bane? And is the policy on iron ore utilization a better way to resolve the dispute between steelmakers and miners? A top story first. India's 20 billion dollar steel industry is struggling to grow. But the government's own estimate projects worth 80 billion dollars are held up due to delays in mine and land acquisition. Ashok Gopalakrishnan tells you why the delays in allocation of coal and iron ore mines are testing the metal of the industry. Going to 2005, when Lakshmi Mittal announced he was setting up a 12 million ton steel plant in Jharkhand for 40,000 crore rupees, that was touted to be India's largest greenfield project ever. Five years later, the project is in limbo because of land acquisition troubles and no allocation of mines. One 27 kilometers away in Kionjar in Orissa, another greenfield project of the company has met with a similar fate. Despite threatening to pull out, Mittal has not given up on India just yet. Early this year, he signed an MOU with the Karnataka government for another 6 million ton greenfield project. Will it meet the same fate? Well, no one can say. Mittal is not alone. Every company that is looking to set up a greenfield steel project in India finds itself in a similar spot. All the MOUs which were signed in setting up new steel plants, these always had a connection to getting iron ore reserves and since the iron ore reserves have not come in many greenfield projects which were to take off have not taken so what you have is this long list of greenfield projects that are in a limbo in states like orissa west bengal and jharkhand but it's not just greenfield projects by private players that are in this state many brownfield projects or expansions are struggling to take off or getting delayed For instance, Steel Authority of India or SEAL has 70,000 crore rupees of such delayed projects. Ditto with Rashtriya Ispat Nigam, which has 12,500 crore rupees of projects that are running late by over three to four years. According to Projects Today, an online database on projects investment in India, as of March 2010, there were 86 integrated steel projects intending to set up capacities in the primary crude steel, secondary and alloy steel sectors. Though most of these projects were announced in the mid 2000 only, around half of them were under implementation as of March 2010. Around 47 projects with an aggregate capacity of 130.4 million tons per annum are still on the drawing boards waiting for either allocation of iron ore mines, land for project or other approvals from government agencies. As far as greenfield projects are coming up, which are of mega size say of 2 million tons, 3 million tons, 5 million tons. There is definitely going to be a problem. First, the land itself is not available. Once the land becomes available, if the fuel linkage is not there in the right time, then they cannot take up the project. Why are greenfield and brownfield projects important? Because India needs to produce a whole lot of more steel to keep pace with its ballooning steel demand. The demand is going to increase. It is a robust demand. Last year, the consumption was at 56 million tons, and production was at 60 million tons. Domestic consumption is expected to grow at a compounded rate of 7 percent per annum for the next 15 years, and that means that India needs to raise steel production on an urgent basis. By 2012, our estimate is that our need for steel will be 120 million tons. By 2020, it would be 220 million tons. And 2050, it would be 500 million tons. And what we are producing, 60 million tons. And there is no sign of any greenfield steel plant coming in the near future. So, what's holding these projects back? You would ask. The very first thing is that this acquisition of land and rehabilitation of the land on stage takes a lot of time. According to Credit Suisse, last year land acquisition delays escalated ArcelorMittal's capital cost for the projects by an estimated 50 percent. 
Ditto with Tata Steel's Kalinganagar project in Orissa, where the project cost has risen from 15,400 crore rupees to 21,000 crore rupees. Besides land, the biggest reason for delays is non-allocation of coal and iron ore mines. The land acquisition has been the main hurdle. Once that is over, I am sure the raw materials allocation will be another hurdle. And as we said, the complex policies, unless they are streamlined, you may have a steel plant ready, but you may not have the raw material. The iron ore and coal, coal is the key ingredient, you know, key input for the making of the steel, and which consists of 60% of our input cost. The only delaying allotment of the mine you know, to any steel producer, which already exists, which is a lot of implication on the finance and sustainability of the company. We are working since 1994, continuously working with the government to allot the mine. Early allotment was made, that was cancelled. Then tie-up tie was done with NMDC, that is still continuing. But there is a inconsistency in supply of the material and the price. To beat that, Indian steel companies have been sourcing raw materials from the overseas market. And that's where the problem is. In the past year alone, global prices of coking coal and iron ore have risen up to 90%, increasing input costs for steel makers. The input prices are higher. And this quarter, for example, because of quarterly pricing, has been a very peculiar one. Right. Uh, quarter uh, two of our financial years, let's say June, July, August. Globally, the demand, there is a bit of a slowdown because of summer in Europe mm -hmm. and whatever reasons. Now, and the raw material has been purchased at the highest rate because it is based on last part, which was at the peak. So, how are people going to manage the margins? The immediate outlook for steel prices looks positive. Last 10 days the prices, there is no further dip in the prices. So I think the uh, prices have been bottomed out. I don't foresee any further fall in the prices. And now with the monsoon uh, settling in, uh, I think uh, the prices should uh, firm up in the time to come. But that may not be enough. Wary steel makers have now started scouting for mines in countries like South Africa, Indonesia and Australia. For instance, JSW, Tata Steel, SR and SEI are setting up ventures in international markets. For power sector, for example, they need the coal. Uh, coal linkages and uh, they are not sure of getting the adequate linkages from Coal India or other so sources or through their own captive sources and that is why th they are scouting for resources abroad. Uh, this is unfortunate in the sense that when we have enough resources within the country and we must uh, explore our resources to the full extent first. Coking coal in India is not really readily available and most of the Indian manufacturers would like to own mines in India because you know vicinity to mines or vicinity to your market and India is going to be the next growing market where most growth is going to be expected. So um, Indians really going out for iron ore is not what I see but for coking coal yes and I think strategically it would be important for us to do certain tie-ups abroad so that Indian industry can grow as a whole. That's one side of the story. On the other side, there are hundreds of illegal mining projects that are thriving across states. Last year, the Indian Bureau of Mines found more than 2,000 cases of violations of the mining law. That will tell you why there's an urgent need for better mining rules and regulations in India. Thousands of crores at stake there. But the good news is there's a new mining act around the corner. We'll tell you why the industry is anything but happy with that after this short break. Stay with us.